conference, it is being conducted both via Zoom and in person as we know this. Being Zoom, we are now going to record it. As Recording in progress. All right, we've got to do it. Um, we'll open up with, with a few opening statements from Coach Trailer, and then open it up to questions here in the room as well as via Zoom. For those of you via Zoom, I think we've all done this before, but just so we are all on the same page here, please just raise your hand virtually and we will uh, go down the line and let you ask any questions to the group here. Additionally, um, anybody in the room, same thing, just raise your hand. Please feel free to identify yourself so our guys know who you are. Once they're done, after about 20 minutes or so, we're gonna bring in San Diego State, do a quick photo op right here at the trophies. Excuse you guys, wish you luck, and have San Diego State sit in here and um, answer questions from you. We do have smoothies, courtesy of Tropical <coughs> Smoothie Cafe. If, you're, if you'd like to get some on your way out, or right now, if you like. Um, otherwise, we will kick it off. Opening statement, Coach Trailer, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, just want to say thank you to Sean and Ren. Done a fantastic job of entertaining us, and uh, with me always, it's about our players, right? And our players are smiling and having a great time. And that makes me feel good when I know they're having a great time. So thanks for having us very much. All right, one quick housekeeping item. We are muted on the Zoom. So Alan, Barry, what can we do to make sure that people on Zoom can hear this? All righty, okay, go ahead. Questions in the room or via Zoom. Go ahead, please, gentlemen. Raise your hand, we'll, we'll kick it off. Go ahead. Mm. Jeff, just what would it mean for the program to cap this season with the first bowl win in UTSA history? It's something we have discussed quite a lot. Um, you know, when the season started, we said someone's going to be the first team in UTSA history to win the West, and why not us? So we checked that box, and then some team in UTSA is going to be the first one to ever win a conference championship. You know, why not us? And we checked that box. And there, there's going to be another team, somebody, some team, whether it's this one or somewhere. It's going to be the first one to ever win a bowl game. Why not us? Uh, Frank, Rashawn, uh, first off, the hats are exquisite. Uh, what are we wearing today with those hats? Justin. Uh, these are Justin brand cowboy hats. Um, and our gray jerseys, you know, shout out to Stretch for always keeping us right, so. Very good. We'll go over here, please. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Couldn't see behind. Coach um, Bryce Miller from San Diego Union Tribune. We talk a lot with that team about what they think the rest of the country thinks about them because they're in the Mountain West. They play out West. A lot of people in the East don't see those games. They're not in a Power Five. Um, in that same vein, what do you think the country thinks about you or the awareness of this program or you know what what's the reputation, the perception? Well, these two kids are a great example. These are both San Antonio kids. And um, the reason they stayed here was to try to put the city of San Antonio on the map other than for the Spurs, uh, for a football team, right? And that's been our mission since I've taken the job in December of 2019, is to, to help these kids uh, accomplish their mission, uh, which was to make us a nationally known football team. We're the seventh largest city in the country. We have an amazing university just built a new $41 million facility. Uh, everybody knows about the Riverwalk, and, and we feel like this will not be a blip in the radar. Uh, we plan on being here for a while. When you pre oh, can I Go ahead. Sorry. Um, when players and coaches that are pressed a little bit about what the personality of San Diego State is, do they really drill it down to their known for defense and physicality and toughness? They're, they're maybe not as polished offensively, but they Kind of ride that defensive reputation and toughness. How would you describe your football team? Well, we take great pride in some of the very things <clears throat> you discussed. Uh, we call it our hashtag 210 Triangle Toughness Culture, our brand. And uh, we think we have a great defense too. Uh, we take great pride in running the football, so something's going to give. And then we feel really strongly about our special teams. Uh, so that's our triangle. And uh, that's how I would describe our football team. We're unique in the way we play the game, in my opinion. We have an unbelievable love for each other. Extremely unselfish team. They get along at all times. They're a joy to be with. 
And uh, I've said it a million times, anybody could coach this team. Over here to the right, please. Frank, what's just been the mood like with the guys being here at Bowl Week? You guys having a lot of fun, but still kind of focused on the job that's left to be done? Um, I think we're having a lot of fun, um, but, you know, once we go out to practice, I think a lot of guys are locked in. And the closer we get to game time, you know, more focused. Um, everybody's starting to get. And uh, we're just ready to go out there tomorrow and uh, have a great game. What would it mean to you to be the first team to win a bowl game at UTSA? No, it would mean a lot, you know, for the city, you know, for the university and all those things. Um, but Coach Trello always talks about it. You know, we don't talk about winning and losing. Um, so we're just going to go out there and execute, you know, play the game and everything, take care of itself. All righty, we're going to go to Zoom now and kick it off with Elwin Henderson. Elwin, if you can just state your name and identify who you're representing, please, and direct your question to the individual up here you'd like to have answer it. Thanks very much. Elwin Henderson, Gilmer Mayor in Gilmer, Texas. And Jeff, I know last season was particularly tough on you with you having COVID and missing the bowl game and it's tough on the team, and it's been really special, I know, this year. How special has this year been for you in the Road Runners? Uh, it's been a great year. Uh, again, it's about these two guys beside me. And, uh, there's a reason they were in those zeros, and we vote for our single-digit guys. And the kids that were the two, the one, the zero, are the ones that get the most votes. And uh, when you get to Coach Rashad Wisdom and Frank Harris, uh, every day is a special day. All righty. Thank you, Elwin. We're going to go to Hector Ledesma, please. Hector, go ahead. Morning, fellas. One, wondering if, if each one of you can answer this question. And I, Frank, I think you might have already kind of answered a, a portion of this question, but just how challenging the balance has been between you guys set out, already accomplished what you mainly set out to do when the season started, you know, right? Win the conference championship and kind of the bowl games icing on the cake. So what's that challenge been like between this is a reward, but at the same time, getting a chance to win the program's first ever bowl game? Uh, so uh, at the beginning of the season, you know, something that we kind of talked about on the defensive side was that uh, that we didn't want to be happy at the beginning of the season. We want to be happy at the end. Um, and, you know, that's what we're trying to trying to do with this bowl game uh, here tomorrow is just, you know, just go out, finish the season strong, regardless, like Frank said, regardless of what the outcome is, you know, we want to be happy with, you know, how we ended it and we want to end it on our terms and that's just playing our brand of football. So we're going to go out there tomorrow, do what we do, and, uh, you know, go out there and just play, just play how we know how to. Rashad, you want to give it a go to? Right. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, I think kind of to piggyback off of what he was saying, um, just go out there and have fun. Like I said, coach doesn't talk about winning and losing, so um, he lets us just play freely uh, with no pressure. And uh, at the end of the day, it's just a game, and everything take care of itself. And uh, hopefully we'll come out victorious. And like I said, everything take care of itself. I'll share a quick story I shared with these guys just to make my point. We don't discuss winning and losing very much. Uh, and I gave the analogy the other day. We were at Andretti's, and I always talk about how great a basketball player I am, right? My, my nickname is Jeff Curry, right? <laughs> so um, we're, we're having a little basketball contest, and uh, Brendan Brady had the record of 39 points. And I got hot, and I made 12 in a row. And it just so happened my ball rolled down to the bottom, and I couldn't find the ball. But when I looked down, I saw I had 36 points, and I had like 12 seconds left. And I wanted to beat the record, right? So immediately I started choking because I was trying to win and all my shots were short. But then I figured out just to trust the process, right? And I made the last two and broke the record. Silly story, but the point being, I don't want these kids worrying about all that. I want to go out there and have a blast, trust the triangle, be true to our culture, and, and, and the wins and losses will take care of themselves. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rashad, with the, with the win in this game, you guys would have a chance to potentially end the year in the top 25 and maybe even open next year with the top 25 ranking. Is that significant or something you guys have talked about at all? Uh, no, not at all. We just talked about, you know, going out there, playing our brand of football, and like Frank said, just letting every, let everything else take care of itself. So. Okay, we'll go front here and then back. Yeah. Left. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace again. Um, San Diego. 
there seems like moments when programs ascend or when they when they start making strides and those bigger goals are conference titles and stuff, but there these intersections when maybe you play a power five, the Aztecs be two Pac-12 teams this season. One of them was Utah that's headed to the Rose Bowl. You guys went on the road at Illinois. What do those moments mean? What did that particular game mean today or this season for you guys? That was a special moment uh, to go up and, again, one of those boxes we checked. It's the first Big Ten team that UTSA has ever beat in the history of the school. So um, that gave us great confidence. Uh, but our <laughs> team doesn't lack confidence. So. But it was, maybe for the rest of the country, let them know that we were legit. And uh, it was a special moment, I'll be honest with you, it was. Would it, both of you guys mind just answering that briefly? Would like you repeat it? Illinois. Yeah, just winning uh, Power Five games on the way up like San Diego State did, like you guys did. How <coughs> important was that Illinois win? What did that feel like in the moment? Um, I think it meant a lot to us, to the program, um, to just show you know that we can go, go out there and compete with those guys. Um, and coming out victorious, it showed that we were legit. And like you said, I think it was momentum just to start the season off. And I think we kind of just ran with it. Kind of like Frank said, I think the biggest thing, uh, you know, we going going up there and being in Illinois was just, you know, it helped propel us this season. And, uh, you know, we kind of used that momentum to carry us throughout the whole season. And, um, you know, a win like that is really big, especially, you know, over a big time program as, such as Illinois. And, um, you know, like I said, I think the only, what it, what it mainly did was propel us for this whole season and we were able to ride out that momentum and, um, you know, just just gave us like a big, big boost to just heading into the, the rest of the season. And, um, you know, I think it just, re just went really well for us just overall. And just, I think that kind of showed throughout the entire season for us. Right here to the back, and Chris, come back over here. Go ahead, please. Uh, Sean, what does uh, what's Mama Wisdom have to say about you and that cowboy hat? And then, secondly, <laughs> my first chance to ask you this: uh, your thoughts on Sin not playing because he's going to go pro? You know, your brother, fellow Jets and Rocket. First, I know my mom loves it with with the head. I know she's waiting for y'all to post the pictures on Twitter. <laughs> She'll be up here later today too. Um, and then. You know, I'm, I'm happy for Sincere, I'm proud of him. Um, you know, he made his own decision and, um, you know, I'm backing him regardless of what, what it, whatever it is. And, you know, this is gonna be the first time I won't be playing with, with Sincere for, in the first, you know, for about eight years now. So it's gonna be crazy. So, um, but, you know, I'm definitely happy for, for Sincere and, you know, I love him to death. So I can't wait to see what he does up there. And I know he's gonna, uh, you know, do what we all expect him to do. So happy for him for sure. Chris, did you have a question? Yes, uh, Jeff, uh, Chris Mikoski on the Bowl Season Radio. You had your uh, reporter from Gilmer checking in a minute ago, so I kind of wanted to go back to those days. You have a stadium named after you just a couple hours down the road from here. Back when you decided to make the jump to college football, what was that process like in deciding that this was a time for a new challenge? It was gut-wrenching. I know everybody, poor Coach Trailer had to decide between the University of Texas or staying at home, but lived on a lake, lived beside my brother, had a stadium named after me, mom and dad, my baby brother, my whole family. That's where I went to school. Uh, and coaching, you don't get many lifetime contracts. And I pretty much had one, right? And, uh, but I love Charlie Strong. And uh, I love the University of Texas, so. I thought it might put me in a position to become a head coach. I'd been a head coach too long to ever go back to being an assistant. I knew that was going to be tough. I don't like making suggestions. I like making decisions. And when you're an assistant, you make suggestions. Um, but it, it, because some great players that we recruited, it, it kind of got me an opportunity. And I'm so grateful I wouldn't be to coach Frank Harris and Rashad Wisdom. And I know I say that a lot, but I mean it. Uh, when you're a coach, the adults are always the difficult problems. Uh, the kids are always fantastic. And I love being around my kids. And it was time. It was time to pass that program on to another group of great men that were my former assistants and my former players. And uh, I miss my people, uh, but I've got some new people in the 210 right now that I've fallen in love with as well. Up here to the right. For both Frank and Rashad, can you guys, uh, there's a lot of Roadrunner fans coming to Frisco. <clears throat> 
probably today. Just what's your message to those guys? Well, first I heard that, you know, the the stadium is, is sold out. So, um, and I heard it as majority Roadrunner fans. So I think we just need to keep doing what we've done the whole season and get loud and, uh, you know, get rowdy and, you know, let's kick, try to go, go, go finish out the season strong. Um, we, we just uh, appreciate everybody's support. Um, you know, without their support, you know, we wouldn't be here. <clears throat> and it just means a lot to us, especially playing away games like this, you know, coming out to support us, um, having the momentum, and just hearing them, you know, it really does, it does help us. And then we just appreciate it. All right, any other questions in the room here? Yeah, go ahead, please. These three right over here, and we'll wrap it up for a photo op. Frank, what is the significance in terms of looking ahead to next season for winning a bowl game and building some momentum? And for you guys as an offense, kind of seeing what you can do without this year? You said for next season? Yeah. Yeah, we, we were ready for this game tomorrow. Uh, we're not looking into next season. And uh, you guys, in that question, after the game tomorrow. <laughs> Culture pillar violation. <laughs> right up here on the front, please. Did you have a question with the iPhone? Steve? No. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Apologies. Go ahead. Uh, Coach, uh, Sincere is already preparing for the NFL. What's been the messaging you've been giving to your players uh, with his decision on that? Yeah, we're all thrilled for Sincere. Uh, what all these guys' dreams are, right? Get a college degree, go play in the National Football League. And, that, and that's what a coach's job, is to help kids fulfill their dreams, their visions. And uh, we're excited for that. We're excited for Brendan Brady. We're excited for Billy. Uh, we're excited to see other kids step up. And it's just football. Every, everybody's dealing with situations. Every team, every coach, NFL's dealing with it, hockey, basketball, whichever team handles. I'm an imperfect coach. Coaching imperfect people. There's always imperfection. Whoever handles the imperfection the best has the best chance to win. And uh, we're excited to watch some new guys step up tomorrow night. All righty. Uh, follow up for uh, Frank and Rashad. You telling the truth? Truth. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He is. New stars will be born tomorrow. <laughs> That's an ender. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. All righty. What we're going to do is we're going to move.